Welcome to this webcast during Lent 2021. We'll discuss the fourth degree of living in the divine will. It's the ultimate highest stage and degree of living in the divine will. And we'll talk about how it's different from the three degrees below it. And also we'll discuss different aspects of the fourth degree and how it really sets itself apart from those other degrees. Just a quick overview of the webcast. We have a, a very quick overview of the degrees themselves. Uh, they were done in a previous video where we entered into each degree and discussed that degree and also talked about how to advance. And I'll be pulling some information from that video into this one, but uh, very superficially. And only so so much to set the stage for discussion regarding the fourth degree. We'll also talk about the uniqueness of souls within the divine will, sanctity in the divine will, and the eternal act of creation in the fourth degree. First, this is a part of the video that I mentioned where we talk about the four degrees of the divine will. And some of you that are familiar with my channel may recognize it. Uh, here I'd like to overlay the uh, different divine will degrees and set up the stage for discussing them. So we have the wanted will, the commanded will, the operative will, and the fulfilled will the highest in the fourth degree, which we'll be emphasizing in this video. And this is from volume 30, January 7, 1932. The wanted will, it makes known what it wants, but it leaves it up to the disposition of creatures to do it or not to do it. And um, this was described by the late Father John Brown in a very amusing manner as he distinguished the wanted will from the permissive will. And he provided the analogy of the wanted will for you is that you were supposed to plan to go to Rome in July and then to visit Assisi. And there you would be inspired by by St. Francis, and you would become the Third Order Franciscan. But instead, in July, you bought a six-pack and you went fishing at the Red River. So that's an example of what God wants, what's the desired will for us, and or providence, versus the permissive will. And although it sounds very amusing, that analogy, uh, Jesus actually laments the disorder of stemming from Adam and his fall from grace and the divine will in the Garden of Eden. He has led to the situation where humans pursue their own will instead of taking advantage of the great goods that are available to us in the divine will. And he actually describes this a sad situation as deaths. He compares it to deaths in the divine life. So in other words, if you look at the situation or the condition of Adam in the Garden of Eden, where he was living in the fourth degree, and he shared in, or he possessed God's creative act, uh, he, well, he and everyone else should be um, sharing in God's divine will in such a manner that we possess the divine will and therefore we possess the creative act of the divine will and every act on our end, on our part, would be considered to be a divine act. In other words, we would share in God's divinity. And 
if this is the first time you're hearing something like this and you haven't looked at, say, the four degrees of the divine will video we did before, uh, this is probably something that may surprise you, but it's actually for someone familiar with the divine will, it is not. It is a, a matter of understanding that the divine will is not a devotion. It's not a charism. The divine will is a gift. And it's a great gift. And it, it's a gift similar to on the same scale as the redemption. It's to set the stage for the new era that is coming. And it's the era of the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of the divine will. The commanded will, it, it gives double graces so that the command may be executed. And you could think of this as inspiration or inspired will. A good example would be you have a hunger, a God-given hunger to do something. Um, perhaps you had a hunger to uh, research marrying apparitions. And while you were doing that, you discovered the divine will and you discovered Louisa Figueroa and maybe that's why you're here. The third, the operative will, it descends into the act of the creatures and operates as if the act of the creature were its own. And therefore, as its own act, it places in it its life, its sanctity, its operative virtue. But in order to come to this, the soul must be accustomed to the wanted and commanded will, which prepares the void in a human act in order to receive the operating act of the divine fiat. A very interesting remark in regards to the operative will in that first you need experience with the wanted will and commanded will. Now, does everyone need to be in those two degrees for a long period of time? No. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute, but every soul is unique. I'll give you an example of um, someone who's highly disposed to cooperating in the third degree or being or living in the third degree or even the fourth. Say there was a, a saint alive today, Saint John of the Cross, and he did not live during the times when in Jesus's providence he wanted to proclaim the divine will to creatures. And the first one was, of course, Louisa Picaretta, the first creature who was born of sin to receive the gift of the divine will. Um, so he were alive today, and he were a saint, just like he, he was back in his day. He was very disposed. If he found out about the divine will and learned about the divine will, he could easily move quickly into the third and then the fourth degrees of the divine will because he was disposed. That void that is discussed in the operative will is that disposition that God is, is uh, getting you ready to, getting you ready for. In other words, that is after the second the first and second degrees are lived in and practice for a period of time. The divine will itself is a great expunger of inordinate attachments. And those inordinate attachments are obstacles to moving forward in the divine will. It creates a void. It gets rid of those attachments and your soul is is looking for God, and that's the void that calls out to God for the, the third and the fourth degree 
of the divine will. Finally, the fulfilled will is the holiest, the most powerful, the most beautiful act, the most refulgent of the light that my divine will can do. And because it is its fulfilled act, everything it has done is enclosed in this act in such a way that one can see flowing and enclosed in it the heavens, the stars, the sea, the celestial beatitudes, everything and everyone. And this is the degree in the divine will that we're about to explore. So let us continue. In uh, volume 36, May 6, 1938, our Lord tells Louisa about the uniqueness of souls that live in the divine will. In other words, all the souls in a given degree are not the same. In fact, they're very unique. So let me read a passage from volume 36. My daughter, our love is so great that we fix degrees of beauty and sanctity to adorn the soul in our divine will. We will make these souls different from one another distinct in their beauty, sanctity, and love, but all beautiful, all unique. Some will remain in the sea of our light and will enjoy the goods of my will. Others will remain under the action of my operating light. These will be the most beautiful ones with all our creative act, art and operating action. And the discussion, the mention of the sea of our light pertains to the first and second degrees. Indeed, the first degree, everyone lives in the first degree. And Jesus explains that truly the kingdom of heaven, the divine kingdom of the divine will actually starts in the second degree. And... Um, as I mentioned, we want to emphasize the fourth degree here, so I'm not going to discuss that too much. You can refer back to the video that I mentioned. I'll leave a link at the end of this video to um, make it convenient for you to go back and look at that. And then the operating and creative acts. They're referred to in as the third and the fourth degree. And really this passage is about the uniqueness of souls and the divine will. And as I mentioned, every soul in a given degree is not the same. And indeed, Teresa of Avila teaches us that Jesus lives in the soul in unique ways. And she didn't know why. <laughs> it, it seemed like that it was a puzzlement to her, but she understood and knew that, that Jesus lived in each soul in a different manner. And so it is in the divine will. The, the divine will is a pathway of going from the first, the second, the third, and the fourth degree. And depending upon disposition of soul, you may move faster um, or you move, may move slower. And that is why we have that video I mentioned regarding the four degrees, but it's important to understand where you're going in that journey. And that's one of the reasons why we're making this video also. Uh, we need to understand where it is that we're going for us to actually succeed in getting there. 
and also to understand the pitfalls uh, along that journey that may slow us up or prevent us from reaching the fourth degree. And as Jesus mentions many, many times in the book of heaven, he wants us all, and it's very important for us, to be in the fourth degree. A little bit about sanctity. In volume 25, February 27, 1929. And since there is no sanctity, past, present, and future, of which my divine will has not been the primary cause, informing all the species of sanctity that exist, it therefore holds within itself all the goods and effects of sanctity that is issued. And so the soul will live in my will by possessing its life with all its effects, will see within herself altogether all the sanctities that have ever been issued. So one important point that I'd like to talk about before we talk about the possession of the divine will and the effects of sanctity that have existed is the sanctity itself before the divine will. The way forward prior to the divine will was basically to achieve sanctity via the method of heroic virtue, self-negation, and manifestations of the utmost highest forms of virtue and persistence. Very difficult road. As a matter of fact, St. John of the Cross mentions that if you want to succeed, and I'm paraphrasing here, if you want to succeed um, in this journey that I just described, the best way is to close your eyes and walk in the dark. Well, the divine will is quite different. The divine will is like a, a big luminous sun on that road. And the divine will cannot exist with, once you enter the divine will, even in the preliminary stages, and you make an effort and you start disposing yourself, the divine will cannot exist with sin. And that is the reason why there's a purgatory. Also, Jesus explains very, very well, I mean, to Louisa, very clearly, I mean, that the conception, the Immaculate Conception, is an effect of our Blessed Mother live, living in a divine will, being gifted with a divine will. And it's an effect of that. And the, the divine will existed in our Blessed Mother at her, her conception. And that is the reason why she has no sin. And as I mentioned, Louisa is the first creature born in sin to acquire this divine gift. Before we talk about the eternal creative act, I'd like to mention that that's maybe a guidepost for people who are wondering uh, whether they're in the fourth degree or the third degree or what to expect. Often I hear people discussing in Senecals um, that before they've entered the fourth degree, there was some sort of a test where their will was tested. Uh, before they were allowed to enter into that fourth degree. And a test that can be quite different one from another. Um, also, as they enter into the fourth degree, there is what you could characterize as being a celebration. A celebration which is usually, usually 
identified with some sort of a supernatural event or occurrence. And you could think of that as God giving feast by the fact that someone has entered into the fourth degree. Now, does that always happen? I would think not. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure if that happens all the time. As I mentioned before, there is a great deal of uniqueness. Everyone is unique. Perhaps it does not happen in every occasion. But it seems to be something that's kind of ordinary to, for lack of a better word. In other words, something that appears and happens often as souls go from the third to the fourth degree. Let's look at the eternal act of living in the divine will. It's a rather complicated subject. I'll, I'll try my best on this. In volume 31, November 13th, 1931, my blessed daughter, everything that our paternal goodness has operated in creation and redemption has not yet received the exchange from the creature. And the reason is because our purpose for which creation was created was a man would complete our will in everything. That same will operating in creation must obtain its continuous operating act in the creature in a way that the echo of one would form the same echo in the other, so as to form one alone. And that is a, that's a description of the possession of the eternal act in the fourth degree of the divine will. And what characterizes that and why it's eternal is that Jesus mentions uh, quite frequently, and especially in volume 19, about his acts being not in succession. In other words, he has one act, his one creative act, one creative continuous act. And because it's one act, it exists in the past, the present, and the future. It's unlike the external acts that we have, where they're successive in time. Um, because it's one act, it, it bridges the gap between the past and the future. And Jesus also explains in volume 19 that the, the one act is what is possessed by someone who lives in the fourth degree of the divine will. And that is the reason why in the fourth degree, it is exponentially higher in, um, than the third degree. And in the video I mentioned about the fourth degrees, we talk about that a little bit, how each degree is not just another step up, it's exponentially higher than the previous degree. Um, the idea of possessing the divine will, there, there's many implications. Uh, one is I like to refute some of the comments I've heard about this uh, regarding some people thinking that you are becoming a, like an automaton because you're being subject to the divine will in the fourth degree. That's not true at all. In fact, you're actually, you're actually in a position of uh, power in, in regard to possessing the divine will. Um, 
every act that you perform shares in that one eternal creative act and reverberates through time. And also because that one act exists in everything, you share in the omnipresence or your acts share in the omnipresence of the divinity. And I know that's kind of difficult to explain, and I hope I was understood in that. Um, the bottom line is Jesus wants us all to be in the fourth degree for that reason. He wants to bestow upon us the greatest gift that he can provide to us to restore what we lost in the Garden of Eden and to share in his divine goods in our lives on earth. Thank you for joining. And I'm told that I suppose the ask for you to like and to subscribe to the Logic Cloak YouTube channel. This will help us proclaim the divine will and help us um, get other people to understand what it's about and uh, basically spread the gift as much as we can. Again, thank you for joining.